Okay. <clears throat> it looks like we are live here. Hello, everybody. Hopefully we're live. Uh, I am Sergeant Silent. If you were here for the Resistance 3-1 one, one, run, you'll recognize me. Uh, if not, I run the Resistance games, Metal Gear Solid, a couple other things. I'll have a couple runs in the marathon. Uh, so yeah, this is Resistance Fallen Man. Time technically starts on first input, but for the sake of the marathon, I'm going to tell you time once I push start, because it's going to be easier to do time. <clears throat> Hello, Rogue. I do have chat open, so I can see. Will I be quiet in this run? Not intentionally. Alright, so let's get this show on the road. I can explain things as we go. So, we are ready in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, start. So... This game starts with a 17.7 second cutscene. Uh, I'm accounting for it in my time. I'm perfectly fine with shots fired not accounting for it. I'll take care of it. Um, but yeah, this is a... Uh, oh my god, live split crash. Whatever, <laughs> I don't need time. Um, so this is Resistance Fall of Man. This is the first game in the Resistance franchise. And... Basically, we are an American soldier who it's later revealed we were experimented on and have a uh, virus inside of us that makes us immune to this wave of aliens that is slowly taking over the entire world. <clears throat> Thank you, Wolfenstein, for the good luck. <clears throat> um... This first mission, we actually don't have any kind of health regenerative properties, so we need to take as little damage as possible in order to not get absolutely destroyed at the end. Um, throughout this game... <laughs> yeah, I have my own timer. I'm good to go, man. Um, throughout this game, we're going to be picking up a lot of weapons. Uh, this is a game developed by Insomniac, the company behind games such as Ratchet and Clank. Um, so you'll recognize a lot, or not recognize, you'll see a lot of really quirky, unique weapons. Get it? Quarky? <clears throat> um, and we're also going to be on New Game Plus. So New Game Plus adds about five unique weapons to the game. Uh, one of them is that set of dual pistols I picked up called Reapers. The advantage to New Game Plus is these five weapons are slightly broken, as you'll see later when we get into the late game. But for now, we're going to use adva or take advantage of the weapons we do have um, uh, and the ammo we have. Because a lot of the time, the if you see me using explosives and stuff, those are actually pretty important to make sure I use them at the get out of my way dude to make sure I use those at the correct spots if I find myself missing ammo or missing explosions or anything like that I'm gonna be in a relatively unfortunate spot and I will have to wing it <clears throat> um, at the end of every episode uh, there are thir or mission there are 30 missions in this game there will be a cutscene uh, hopefully we will be seeing one of those cutscenes because it's unskippable. Uh, for you, you will always see a frame of the cutscene because uh, I don't know. That's how it works, man. Uh, the rest of them, if you see a cutscene, it means I was lazy and wasn't pushing start. <clears throat> so now we're on mission two. Uh, this introduces the new enemy leapers. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. Uh, but it also introduces the new mechanic of, um, we now recover health. If you watch in the bottom left, you'll see my health recover. Uh, the way health recovery works is as long as I don't pass a, uh, one of those black bars at 25%, I will recover health back up to full, or back up to the maximum that bar will allot. So the goal is going to be to have as much health as possible uh but expect quite a few moments of monka s 
Am I speaking too loud? Is something too loud? Please let me know. We did not have time to do a great audio check, so I will adjust. I do not mind. Um, you also notice that I am jumping upstairs. <clears throat> and the reason I jump upstairs is because the way Insomniac uh, made this game is uh, stairs and slopes, but specifically stairs, will cause you to slow down. But if you jump up them, but not too fast, there's a rhythm to jumping up them, you'll actually maintain your movement speed <clears throat> and uh, save time. Some stairs, though, you'll actually... <clears throat> uh, I can turn game audio up in a couple seconds. Some stairs, there's actually a specific angle where if you... Um, if you find that angle, you actually can go up those stairs without jumping, and it will not slow you down. But in general, it's more consistent to uh, just jump. <clears throat> uh, so this is the tank. We'll see the tank once or twice. Basically, we're ridiculously overpowered in the tank. We're not going to die in this thing. Uh, most of these missions are going to be get from point A to point B. However... Um, a few of them will actually be triggers that rely on killing a certain amount of enemies or defending an ally or something. Uh, this is also any percent, and this game's kind of broken, as you'll see later, where we'll be skipping a lot of mandatory triggers. So, if you came here uh, expecting me to play this game correctly... <clears throat> I, I turned game audio up just a little. If you came here expecting this game to be played correctly, no. No, 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 no. You will not be seeing this game played the way it was intended. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. And yes, this is on PlayStation 3. This is a PlayStation 3 launch title exclusive. It was never released on anything ever again. Sad days for resistance, but it's a good game, though it's hard. I will not pretend it is easy. Um, so this is a point control mission. The way we win this mission is we defeat all of the enemies, and the initial wave of hybrids, which is this enemy you see me killing here, is actually entirely random, and we did not get a great pattern for them. Oh my god, is he alive? Okay. But we're gonna make do. And accept what we got. Because killing everyone is more important uh, than killing everyone fast. <laughs> There's also a couple audio cues I'm using here. If you look at the bottom, a guy will come in and say, that's one, that's two. Um, those audio cues are very important because it's how we know... Uh, how far into the mission we've progressed. Uh, so this game was not on PSP. There was a PSP release called Resistance Retribution, which was made by a company that starts with B. I can't remember its name exactly. Uh, it's not an official Insomniac game, but it is canon. I have not actually beat Retribution yet, uh, shamefully, I must admit. So, right now, our main focus is going to be going for headshots or fast-firing guns at close range. And then follow it up with a melee. Because I'd have to get my copy of the game out to tell you guys what it is. But you can look it up. Uh, it, it was not Blue Point. <laughs> um, but uh, in this game, there are two things that are extremely scary and overpowered. The first one is explosives uh, and you'll be seeing lots of explosives later and just how terrifying those explosives can be the second thing that's terrifying is melee I'm playing on easy and if a hybrid successfully melees me you will see me take about 50% of my health and damage remember this is easy I will take 50% 
on higher difficulties and this game goes up to superhuman which is even harder than hard it's like expert uh you will die if you get meleeed the cool thing about explosions on easy is you'll die anyway <laughs> so hopefully well i'll talk about them when we pick up something called the hedgehog um but that was york uh the basic gist of that is the Chimeran launched the Chimeras launched something called the Spire Strike, which led this swarm of little infecting bugs out, and it infected all of the Americans who were at that base because we're an American over in England. And Hale is actually Hale's the name of the main character is actually resistant or immune, well resistant based off of the future games to the Chimeran virus and. That allowed him to essentially wake up inside of a Chimeran base, and now he is going to rescue one of the most important characters in this game in a cutscene that we're not going to see, because cutscenes are slow. Interesting fact about cutscenes. The first time you see a cutscene in this game, you actually cannot skip it. The way the game... Oh, that's bad RNG. Um, the way the game is coded you must have saved in your PlayStation 3's memory that you have watched a cutscene in full or you cannot push the start button to skip it. So that's fun. You have to play it at least once <laughs> to be able to run it. Um, so we're coming up on the first clip in the run. This is gonna be a staple feature of the game. Uh, the best way to explain clips to anyone is you find where some geometry meets and you just uh, Into that wall and uh, eventually it'll work Sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't uh, Thankfully this clip behaved really well, and we are through uh, That one is a small one. There are some bigger ones later uh, That's do a lot more content but the advantage of, or the downside of that clip we just did, is we actually skip uh, the shotgun, which is a very useful weapon. Uh, and we won't be getting it until later now. Oh god, don't melee me. Motorboating a wall. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my character will just shimmy back and forth until he rams his face through it. Um, there is, for people who prefer glitchless, there is a no major skips category. Uh, it's about, I think, 15 to 20 minutes longer. So, this run, world record, is a 132.58. Uh, which I set today. And any percent, or no major skips is a 145, I think. So, that gives you an idea of how much time there is. Oh, I'll be honest, my No Major Skips run is kind of bad. Please run it. I don't want to anymore. <clears throat> so yeah, we're moving on to Grimsby 2. We rescued the person. Uh, we rescued Rachel Parker, and now she's helping us escape. She's going to provide us with a transport. Thank you, I appreciate it. I, I had a good practice run, so we're hoping... Today, we're hoping for the legendary... Uh, yes, that is a challenge. That is absolutely a challenge. Uh, today we're hoping for the legendary sub 130. That is my white whale. Uh, when I get sub 130 in this game, uh, you will never see me run it again because I am so done with it. Correct. This is a PlayStation 3 exclusive. You need to be good at twin stick shooters if you want to compete. No if ands, or buts. Uh, do not try to emulate it. It will crash on the emulator. The resistance games have not been worked on. Uh, so this is a very scary room. We're gonna try to get through this room in one cycle. Uh, or by one cycle, I mean not die. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we get good. Uh, we had a good enemy placement. Uh, oh, that hedgehog is risky. Um, so, that was a hedgehog. Um, the way hedgehogs work is you throw them, they pop up, and they explode into 
literally hundreds. Oh, that's gonna hurt, please. No, don't. Um, they explode into literally hundreds of um, little itty bitty needles. And the way this game is coded, if a single, and I mean single, needle of that hedgehog nabs hail in the head, done. You're donezo. Um, every needle of a hedgehog does full damage. So one hitting you in the head uh, does 100% of your health. Uh, you, depending on your capture card, you actually may not need an HDC stripper. Um, I use a Game Capture HD from Elgato. It's no longer officially supported, but if you can get your hands on one, it comes with a special cable that bypasses the need for HDC uh, stripping. But not only that, it also works for PlayStation 2, uh, 1, and 4, so I highly recommend it. Um, if you're looking for a cheap, like, $120 capture card that for easy PlayStation streaming. Uh, there is delay if you want to play off of game capture instead of the game itself. So, heads up on that. <clears throat> um, Sony owns the IP rights to Resistance, and Sony recently acquired Insomniac Games. So... Technically, yes, Insomniac and Sony do own the IP rights to this game. Will we see another one? Huh. I don't know. That's true. If you can find it with the cable. Um, so this is the last level of Grimsby. Areas are either made up of two or three areas. Um... Well, that was a convoluted sentence. They're made up of two or three levels, depending on what it is. And we got a really good pattern. We were trying to get that um, uh, explosive canister to fly into these guys, or in that doorway. Which is what we succeeded on doing, and that allowed us to kill them both. Um, so this is another kind of out of bounds in this game. Uh, sometimes Insomniac just decided to not... Put invisible walls preventing you from getting out of bounds so we're gonna take advantage of that and casually hop out of bounds oh that sucks that slopes a bit tight to walk on if you if you mess up that slope walk you'll slide down like that um interestingly enough there is a small spawn out here that spawns like six hybrids if you ever want to just look at the hybrid model you can come out to this out of bounds and just poop spawn them in and check them out. Uh, they actually won't aggro you because they don't have an AI stored to them that will instantly aggro on them. <clears throat> um, another thing to talk about is that you'll as I pick guns up, there's a weapon wheel that we're hopefully going to see minimal of because it pauses the entire game when I bring it up. And what the, but what the weapon wheel does, being able to pause the game is safe, so you might see it once or twice. Um, each weapon has two types of fire, a primary and a secondary. Uh, I could talk about each of them as we get really into it. Uh, but I would like to say, this is my favorite line in the entire game, so check this line out. Remember, we are the only American who survived. So there's a lot of people here. This is a long fight. The British expect us to come and help them here and push through this huge fight. But we're just going to mash into this corner to clip through this house. And because we did that, we're now going to skip this entire level. And I mean, we are literally skipping 90% of this extremely long, extremely challenging level full of lots of wave fights where if you bum rush through a wave you will die and it only has one two checkpoints in it so this is not only the faster route it's also the safer route uh insomniac put a lot of detail into the out of bounds thankfully so we're able to skip everything 
Uh, if you guys remember this game, this in front of us, if you live in England and are awake right now, uh, good morning. Uh, this is the Manchester Cathedral. This game actually got a lot of controversy in the news because... The owners of the Manchester Cathedral tried to sue Insomniac Games over the disparaging image of the cathedral that this game showed. You could Google that. That was a real lawsuit that happened. I do believe that the church lost. Uh, so that's a howler. They're these little dogs. Little. They're these dog things that chase you. Uh, we used what's called a bullseye tag. <laughs> remember Haze? Yeah, I remember Haze. Um. Uh, da, da, da. We used a bullseye tag. What a bullseye tag does is it causes all bullseye ammo you fire to head directly to where the bullseye tag went. And we're going to take advantage of that for quite a few uh, bigger, more annoying enemies. That level ends when we kill that dog. So that's the that's the whole point of it. Uh, if any of you play Warhammer, I constantly call those things Crout Hounds. I know that's not right, but it's a Crout Hound, and you can't change my mind. <clears throat> uh, so we just picked up shotgun ammo. Remember, we skipped the shotgun earlier, but the game, because the shotgun is a new game weapon and not a new game plus weapon, the game says, "Huh? How did you miss the shotgun? You must have a shotgun." Here you go. It just has no ammo. So now we have a free shotgun and we got some free ammo for it because it was laying around in this room. Uh, we're specifically going to come into this corner to bait all of these leapers to come to us. We want to try to kill them in large groups at least two at a time. Uh, because once we kill enough, they all explode and the level just ends. I got through that with good health. I'm actually really happy with that. <clears throat> uh, now we're going to get introduced to Steelheads here. Steelheads fire a gun called the Augur. And what the Augur does is its shots will pass through walls. Which makes it quite a annoying... Also, bad doggy. Um, it makes it quite an annoying weapon to deal with. When you're first learning this game, this is one of the scariest levels because it's very easy to uh, get sniped and killed like is about to happen. I'm actually going to play really safe and let that refill. <clears throat> because now I have to make sure I don't get massacred here or I will have to restart the whole level. <clears throat> uh, I'm just going to take a safety death here because this level is uh, pretty challenging. <clears throat> Um, so now that we've hit the checkpoint for this level, uh, we're able to do the rest of it relatively safe, I'd say. <clears throat> uh, we also picked up in that room a type of, okay, game, a type of grenade called the Backlash Grenade. Backlash is a New Game Plus exclusive item, and it is the most important weapon to the entire game. Almost every run, or almost every time you see me use a backlash grenade, bar one, it is going to be for a extremely important survival or piece of tech. What the backlash grenade does is it actually will... That's not good. I'm going to kill him because he's going to chase me and do a lot of damage. Um, what the backlash grenade does is all enemy fire directed into it, even that enemy fire that would pass through a wall, is redirected right back at the enemy. Uh, and for some reason, it causes homing on the enemy. So enemies are going to get destroyed. Uh, this is the introduction of mines. We don't care. And here's a small sequence break. That skips... One scripted fight in about 10 seconds. Oh, God, why did I jump? That wasn't supposed to be a jump. Okay, we'll do it again. Don't worry, we hit another checkpoint. Uh, is my controller messed up? No, it just a phantom jump input. I've literally never seen that before. Something, whatever, my fault. It's fine. 
User fail. User failure. <clears throat> I am not upset by that. Uh, this run is risky enough. We do not need to get upset over small mistakes. So, yeah, the goal, or when these things come up, you're supposed to duck under them. Otherwise, they do a lot of damage, as you've just seen. So, anyone who saw the Resistance 3 run knows I talked about softlocks a lot. Um, if the game so chooses, we will hardlock right now. Okay, good. No hardlock. If we hardlock there, um, the game actually doesn't just softlock. We have to reset the PlayStation 3. Like, it's, it's donezo if that happens. So we got really good luck by not having that happen because I do not know what causes it. It, 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 it's just a thing and the game will say, yeah, uh, you know that run you started? You watched it die about 30 minutes in. Uh, thankfully it's the only super detrimental run killer and there's it's, and if it doesn't happen we're good we'll all right return of the soft lock <laughs> it's actually fair to call that one a hard lock it's not just going to be a soft lock there is no way to fix that if that happens you're done you're done <clears throat> I understand the game was made about a PS3 dev kit because they made your release of PC. Uh, this was a PS3 launch title, yes. Um, and it it shows. Some people say it doesn't age well. Uh, I personally say it aged really well. Uh, and by that I mean it's a very accurate representation of modern day England. Ask anyone from England. Uh, it looks so much like England that I had someone come into my chat one day who I've never seen before and they said why does this game look so much like England um, yeah I could speak personally of its accurate representation even though I've only been to England once in my entire life someone is gonna enjoy that joke and I appreciate that you enjoyed that cuz I I loved it um, so this fight is another giant ring or er, giant wave fight. We have to just essentially kill every enemy in the room. Uh, and what we did was we ran in a specific circle to bring every enemy around so that they would all be targeting us in this location. And as you saw, the backlash just utterly annihilated everybody there. <clears throat> So we just picked up some more backlash grenades, and now we are going to get a dropship coming in. <laughs> it looks like Google Maps Street View. Fonz can confirm. Um, so this buzzard is going to do what I like to call... Uh, pot we're potentially going to see here the legendary steelhead yeet. It's possible that a steelhead will yeet through a wall. Hey, there he goes. Um, so the reason that happens is Insomniac decided the best way to program the enemies in that V or inside of this uh, dropship was to literally put all of them on the same spawn coordinate. And the way the Insomniac Engine 1.0, which is what this game runs on, works, when two objects exist in the same spawn one of them is going to go flying it will either fly up in that case it flies sideways and through a wall or what this game's favorite thing to do is is send it down and the floor is only one pixel thick so if you get sent down doing a proxy you fall to your death in the void thankfully there are kill triggers uh, beneath the ground if you fall too far or too long the game will kill you which is really generous of it <clears throat> but yeah that's a thing uh, this is a stalker you'll notice I kept throwing auger walls up uh, this gun is the auger that I talked about the secondary fire is that wall for every object guy or wall that a auger bullet passed passes through its damage is multiplied 
and that enemy I just fought is called a Stalker. We'll be seeing a few of them, but that's the only one we're going to fight that way. Um, and when the Augur hits it, even though its weak point is on the back, because the Augur passes through objects, it actually does double damage, or triple damage. It's passing through two walls and my homie, as Fade puts it. And on top of that, it's hitting the front and the weak spot of the, uh, um, the Stalker. So, yeah, it's, it's absolutely detrimental. Uh, we're gonna go for a Kobe here. Oh, sick, we got it, dude. Uh, all that does is that makes this hybrid spawn earlier. It causes this group to come out instead of, um, us having to fight them here. Um, so this level is all, um, oops, extremely, uh, psych, not cycle, like, where you move causes enemies to spawn. And, um, that, what we just did was we actually bum rushed forward and skipped a couple waves that the game wanted to spawn. And because we skipped those waves... Uh, the game couldn't actually, um, please die. Uh, because we skipped those waves, the game stopped, it just stopped spawning enemies, and we were able to move on ahead. <clears throat> That's really the only, like, wave set that we're going to see. There is another one in the next level, but it's irrelevant. Oh, please destroy that barrel. Uh, so this room, there's a big fight down here, but we're not actually going to do that fight, uh, even though we actually did get lucky and kill everyone, because the end trigger for this level is to kill these four enemies up here. Once they're dead, it doesn't really matter what happens. As long as they die somehow, this level will end. And that level also has no checkpoints. If you die, you go all the way back to the beginning. Let's see. Alright. You guys are just talking about the PS3 dev kit. That's cool. So this level, it, we're going to get the sniper rifle, which allows us to slow down time. But more importantly, this level has a skip. A very, very big skip. And it's a New Game Plus exclusive skip. Everyone cross your fingers for first try backlash skip. This is why Backlash are so important to the run. If we get this, this run is blessed. Uh, but it's taken me sometimes over six tries to get this. Uh, so, pray. This is a Titan. Uh, the way to fight Titans is to shoot them in the head with a bullseye. And then, uh, it's counterintuitive, but stand next to them, because it will actually bait them into trying to melee you, or roar, and your bullets will travel faster, and you'll kill them, which is awesome. Okay, backlash grenade skip time, here we go. So there's a specific lineup here that, uh, sometimes works. I'm gonna go for it here. One, that's awful. And then a safety backlash. And let's see. We did not get it. So I need a suicide to reset, unfortunately. Uh, so the goal, if we see this successful, what's going to happen is the bridge is actually going to not be destroyed. Uh, and the reason we want that is because if we go the intended way in this level, um... Suffice to say, we will be here for a while. The intended way to do this level is very sad, very grueling. And we got it second try. Second try is very good. Uh, my personal opinion on that trick is until you failed it three times, it's not worth giving up. Because that trick is very finicky. Um, if you would like to help find a 100% consistent lineup, please do help. Uh, it would be much appreciated. But anyway, we're supposed to go up that bridge to my left. Instead of going up that bridge, which triggers, like, 
eight waves of hybrids of increasingly more challenge and some steelheads we tricked the game into dropping those explosives and protecting that bridge and that lets us go up and skip a trigger without actually going out of bounds so it's also legal and no major skips and it it cuts a like two and a half minute level down to if you get it first try uh maybe a minute and 20 it's it's really really big First try. All right, so this is Nottingham 3. Uh, this introduces the real sniping concept of this game. Uh, it wants us to snipe things. We're gonna do that few and far between. The sniper is good, but it's slow to aim. And on top of it being slow to aim, it's secondary fire, which is extremely beneficial is also slow uh, because it slows down real time and we don't want to slow down oh you didn't die <coughs> that guy's supposed to die on the um <coughs> on the backlash i threw and we don't want to slow down time any more than necessary uh this is going to be a small skip here you're intended to walk around and s spawn some enemies but instead, we're just going to do that. And this is going to be one of the few times we actually slow the game down. Uh, I'm being chased by a couple enemies, so I'm going to take them out for safety. Uh, because headshotting that guy is actually really important. That, that steelhead, if you don't headshot him, will truly, truly harass you. That is not good. He is not supposed to be on the turret. Safe, 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 do not die. Safety. Always safety. Trust me, this room is, or this game, there's going to be a lot of potential monka asses. Is, it's scary. It's safe, but it's scary because of just how much damage you can take. Uh, so this is this Titan mini boss at the end of the level uh, It's supposed to be able to hit you But it turns out if you sit right behind this wall the Titan actually can't shoot you Which is extremely useful for superhuman and you could just sit there and uh, Unload into its head and it can't do anything <clears throat> And with that we are finished early game it is time to move into mid-game. So this level is going to start with another one of those lovely unskippable FMVs. Good night, Rogue. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, this is going to be another one of those lovely FMVs. Uh, followed by a clip. To shoot the tanks on its back uh the titans don't have tanks on their back that take extra damage the titan is faster if you shoot it in the head because that um tricks it um so you can actually clip on both the right and the left side of this gate the uh right side is slower but it's a hundred times more consistent um, so here's another uh, first try or bust trick. Uh, of course, I did not get that first try. Or, of course, the gate misbehaved. So we're not out of bounds. Uh, this trick, it's gonna lose a lot of time if I miss it. So I'm gonna make sure I line this up. Okay. Nice, we got it. Uh, so what that did was that skipped the entire level i mean everything uh unfortunately to an extent that also skipped a new game plus exclusive weapon called the arc charger and because this was new game plus um 
we don't actually get new game plus weapons if we miss them. So making sure we pick up the ones that are important to us is extremely important. <clears throat> first try. That one was first try. And that, that was a good first try. That is a trick you did not want to see me fail. All right. Oh, dear. That's not a shotgun. Um, so... Another thing I'd like to say is this game was actually ran at Shots Fired 2017 by Epic. And at the time, the world record was, I think, a 206, and he managed to get a 159 during the run. Uh, if you notice, the estimate for this game is actually a 42. I put a large amount of time in this game over the last two years and was able to find 20 minutes worth of time save. A majority of that is going to be at the end game, but if you saw that run two years ago, you'll absolutely notice the things that have changed in this run. Uh, but like I said, most of those are going to be end game. That is when you'll notice the the big changes. All right, so we're just going to get through this tunnel and not get caught on the 800 leapers and die. <clears throat> And we're going to do another gate clip here. This one saves significantly less time. But, oh my god, okay. But it also lets us skip a really, really annoying fight with a couple steelheads in an explosive wall. Or in a, a room with explosive barrels and a bunch of leaper nest eggs. And... Well, I'll let the Leaper Eggs speak for themselves, because you're going to see them uh, as soon as I clip through this wall. Um, what I was saying earlier, though, about these gates, if you do the left side clip, unlike what I'm doing here, where I have to... Ooh, no. Where I have to do this jump thing to successfully get through this gate, the left... Er, yeah, the left side, you actually will just clip right through without jumping or anything, but... You saw I passed through almost instantly. The left side, you'll actually... There's a very strong chance that you'll just get stuck on some weird invisible collision. Uh, so these are leaper eggs. Whenever you run through them, you're basically guaranteed to take a butt ton of damage. Because the leapers come out doing a leap. And that leap is how uh, this creature does damage to you. So, entering that hallway with 50% health or less is very scary. You, you do not want to ever do that if you can help it. Alright, so we're coming up on Cheshire 3. Uh, that's how we refer to them. We just call them 1, 2, and 3. That's the easiest way. Um, I Most of the missions, I can't tell you what they're named. A few I can, but... Uh, even though I just saw it, I, uh, I think this is called Angel's Lair or something. I don't know. Uh, so we're going to look. A enemy will spawn in. We might see the Michael Jackson. Ah, no Michael Jacksons. That's that's a shame. Um, oh, that's not good. <clears throat> uh, that enemy is a menial. Uh, if it does that, it does uh, more damage than it should ever. But uh, Insomniac is a bunch of jerks. And they made that ability do way more damage than it should uh it does 50 percent on easy if you let them grab you uh it does way more on harder difficulties so yeah we'll hopefully not see that <clears throat> all right so we're gonna bum rush through these leapers because we're brave we are very brave and we're gonna head down into the um the Greyjack room. So Greyjacks are an enemy exclusive to this game. They're basically any form of Chimera that's grown old and uh, its legs have, ma its limbs have massively extended. The best way to deal with them is to repeatedly melee them like this. And we saved this guy here. So he's gonna help us. Uh, this is also an example of what a uh, um, a proxy looks like. 
The Grey Jack and me occupied the same space, so it skyrocketed me. We can't get very good ones here, but if you check out some of the uh, YouTube VODs that I've put up about different random glitches and stuff in this game, you can see some really interesting proxies to get some unique spots, even if they're not useful. Um, but this room is scripted. All of the pods raise at a fixed rate. Uh, the only pod that really matters is making sure we kill the final Greyjack as fast as possible. Um, because this Greyjack here, this is the one that actually determines when the door opens for us. And now we're coming into a uh, really annoying fight. Because, I mean, if we die in this fight for some reason, what ends up happening is we actually have to redo that Greyjack room, which is very, very time consuming. So we're gonna uh, not die in this room. <clears throat> um, this room actually, you can get into it um, from behind, or not get into it from behind. You can go around and pass a trigger which is that screen rubble and if you pass that screen rubble rumble trigger these or that tunneler which is what that thing is called will actually not spawn and if it fails to spawn you can't beat this level please stop hiding behind a wall so it's very important that we successfully get that screen rumble and then spawn the tunneler so we can finish it all right good that was a good cheshire all right, so Somerset. Recently, uh, if any of you have been paying attention to this game, you'll know a brand new skip was discovered in Somerset 3. Uh, I will be showing that off here, and that has made world records significantly easier to take because the run's not really been optimized with the new strat. Also a challenge. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to... Um, Move into this, deal with these enemies, and then run for our life because we don't have to fight anything here. All of these starting enemies are just a nuisance in our way that we can ignore. Nah, you good, Spring. Alright, so once we get through this, uh, we are going to trigger a cutscene. And now we need to make sure that we keep at least one hedgehog here. Because we are going to do a death abuse strat. And the hedgehog is the fastest way to death abuse in this game. Uh, so that was... Uh, that was our four hedgehogs we were allotted. Unfortunately, we got bad hedgehog spread. So it didn't actually do anywhere near as much damage as I would have liked. Also, where is my health? Please and thank you, game. There you are. <clears throat> But we did get a checkpoint which spawn um, these slip skulls here. Uh, there's more health that I'm going to go get over here. <clears throat> and spawning these slip skulls is required to do the next trigger. You actually only need to kill, I think it's three of them, in order to get this door to open and these hybrids to come out. Uh, and the finish level, or the finish trigger for this level is actually killing these two hybrids inside this building. Yeah, our DJ headed to bed. That's about it. All right. So now we're on to the first vehicle mission of the run. Uh and this is one of the most insanely broken missions, which you will see very quickly. The intended route for this mission is to go into a couple buildings, hit some switches, and open these gates. But instead, um, we have a way to bypass all of the gates and save a lot of time and effort. And that's the first gate, and those are the two towers on the left and right. But like I said, instead of going in them, we're going to yeet that jeep and hop around this gate because Insomniac didn't put an invisible wall there. And now we don't have the Jeep, which is unfortunate. 
But it turns out there's a checkpoint here. We take our death abuse to respawn where this checkpoint was. And interestingly enough, if you do that, the game says, oh, obviously you had here, you had the Jeep. And it respawns us with the Jeep. Unfortunately, at the second gate, Insomniac was smart enough to say, but what if they find a way over this gate without the Jeep? No checkpoint. So this next gate, we have to be a little more creative because if we skip it, we will not be getting a checkpoint unless we've activated the gate. Oh, okay. Thank you, game. Uh, we're going to try to run these steelheads over because they're a nuisance. You don't have to, but it's nice. And now we're going to abuse the game's collision properties to get on top of this Jeep. Cart right, please. On top of this Jeep. And now we're over the wall. And because we can't finish the level, we don't have a checkpoint. Um, and if we continue going forward, what's going to happen is we're going to find another gate that is going to be a pain to spawn. We're going to mash into this corner and keep jumping. And eventually it's going to let us through. And we're going to try to get a proxy to get up onto that rock. Or to get through another just like that. No! That's the bad thing that can happen. That's what I was talking about. When two objects end up inside each other, it's possible that the game yeets you down. And when it does that... There is one pixel between you and death. I've not had that happen in a long time. That was very sad. But it's fine. We get to do it again. So, um... Yeah. We're gonna do it all again. Uh, we're gonna proxy up and over. And... You can see back there in the distance is the second set, or is another set of buildings and another gate that we're not going to deal with. Thankfully, we got back here relatively quickly. It's unfortunate, but it's not like a major time loss. Unless you're, you know, if you're going for like an extremely high end run, yeah, that's pretty detrimental. Thank you. And we got a, a pop right away. Come on, game. Let me through. Get, get whoa! I'll, I'm just getting infinite pops here. That's that's new. Oh no, we're being attacked by enemies. That's not good. Please, game, game, please. No, don't do that. If we do that, what we what just happened there, we'll actually clip back through to the other side, and we do not want to end up back through because then we have to clip again. Dude, this clip is not behaving this run at all. There we go. So now that we're through, we're going to hop up this mountain. I said hop up this mountain and get to the end of the level and hop over this to hit the end level trigger. Yo, what's up, heck? Welcome, welcome. More resistance. The run's been trolling me, so it's been great. All right, so this is Somerset 3. The brand new skip is here, and originally this level was a three and a half minute level that had a cutscene that we had to hit in the middle, and if we didn't hit it, it was impossible to uh, beat this level. But I found there's actually a trigger somewhere. Well, should I say when you find anything? That if you hit, it ends. So to borrow a line from my good friend Epic, there's a switch here. Switches are good for two things. One, opening gates. And the other thing switches are good for is getting on gates. Uh, okay, that's awkward. Getting on... Oh boy. Getting on gates. So now that we're on this gate, we're going to hop on an invisible wall, a second invisible wall, and now we're out of bounds. And what we're going to do with this out of bounds is we're going to bypass the entire level. So the old route was to walk along that fence, 
but it turns out that if you land on that Goliath, there's a checkpoint here. And if you hit that checkpoint, the end level trigger just kind of activates. So now all we have to do is beat this level and uh, not get absolutely murdered by the amount of enemies that are going to be shooting at us in the face. <laughs> so this is the final fight. Uh, if we are lucky, what's going to happen is that grenade's going to kill two guys. Oh, we got all three. Nice. Um, and then there's three guys up here, which for some reason seem partially overtuned and can do way too much damage to you. <clears throat> and with that, we're going to finish the level. And that is Somerset. And that is the new skip. That skips. Uh, if you play this game casually, you just watch. Uh, a, a lot of that level that you remember is now gone. Uh, that skipped another new game weapon called the Sapper, which we will be getting later. <clears throat> uh, automatically because it's new game. So this is Bristol. This is the shortest series of levels. Uh, the first strat we're going to go for uh, is we're going to try to ride a stalker. And you'll see what I mean by that, depending on what RNG we get. Okay, we got good RNG. The stalker was in a good spot. Uh, this trick is entirely ran- Streamer dead. Streamer dead inside. This trick is entirely random. Um, how the stalkers move depends on how my allies hit them. Depends on how the Jeep hits them. Depends on how the enemy Chimera move. Uh, we're going to try to use this Jeep to boost us out of bounds. Did not get the boost. Dude! Did you see that? The Stalker reached its claw into the air and swatted me. <laughs> that Stalker did not want me riding it. <clears throat> All right, Jeep boost again. Did not get it. So now we'll go for an actual stalker boost, please. And we have successfully rode. Don't step on me. We have successfully rode that stalker out of bounds. <laughs> Just as Alexa for recorder music. <laughs> I probably need it right now. So demoralized. Um, and because we rode that stalker out of bounds, all of this that I'm looking at is intended gameplay, and we're not going to do any of it. Unfortunately, we're in a rough spot with only 2 HP, so we're going to... Actually, I'm going to take a safety strat and go inbounds earlier than... Um, where we would which is gonna cause us to have to fight this fight but it also gives us hp which attempting the to enter inbounds the way i was going to without uh with only two bars of hp uh let's just say that the landing impact from the fall re-entering bounds does 50 percent of your hp so it, it, it would have been sketchy. And you land in fire. So you have to not die. But anyway, yeah, this is the end. Um, the intended route would skip that fight entirely. Uh, so now, this is where, if you saw this run two years ago, this is where the run's going to get different. Uh, so there's a clip in this level that Epic did and it ended the level in about 20. <laughs> Money. Um, but instead, I am going to do something unique because we're on New Game Plus. And I am going to actually enter the level and go downstairs. Bruh. What? I'm going to actually enter the level and go downstairs. 
And the reason I'm coming downstairs is so I can pick this thing up. And this is a New Game Plus weapon called the Dragon. The Dragon is the weapon I talked about earlier. It is just, it's, I cannot explain how broken this, please clip. I cannot explain how broken this weapon is. Uh, it's all on purpose. I am trying to live up to that MGS5 run, but I mean, inside we all know. I I'll never be able to live up to that, dude. That MGS5 run was so good. At, at this point, I'm just a disappointment. I'm just trying to get through my run underestimate. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you all. Nah, Python's a good friend. Um, so this is a very short mission where we have now pioneered a stalker and the the fastest way to do this mission is like 20 or like 50 seconds uh, the goal is to kill three Titans and three turrets there are actually four turrets in this mission um, and as you'll see here the stalkers rockets are uh, not tied to their aiming reticle that you see there. They actually fly off to the left or right and above. Which makes them really awkward for trying to hit things. Because the reticle's tied to your, um, the reticle's tied to your guns. Not your rockets. <laughs> I'm sure you could do it, Python. Submit it to the MGSR uh, marathon that's coming up, Python. You'll do great. Shameless advertisement for Metal Gear Solid speedrunning. Uh, there'll be a marathon coming up. Check it out. Join the Discord. Not my game. Join the Resistance Discord as well. Please. We need people. Um, but, yeah. So we picked up a couple sapper ammo and some other things there. And now we're going to run through this weapon with the dragon. Uh, you'll notice here that the dragon is basically one-shotting everything, which is really good. Uh, that's a small sequence break. Saves like uh, a second and a half to jump on that rock and then boost up. Uh, Greyjax, give me good RNG. That's good. Okay. And now going to just run through this level uh, instead of fighting it. This next room coming up is... Full of explosives. I've never had bad luck in it, but based off of how this run is going, uh, I fully expect a potential death to this room. Uh, thankfully, my expectations were not met. There was no death. This is a very long level if you die, because that is our first checkpoint. And that is our second to last backlash refill. Uh, from this point on, if we mess up our backlash grenades, while Run is not dead, Run is in a very, very bad spot. So, yeah. Backlash grenades, very important. Uh, this is another room that's all cycle, er, um, it's all fixed. It doesn't matter if you kill these enemies or not. The next cycle will begin. And the only trigger required to open the door, not that I've truly tested this, because there's a lot of enemies if I tried is to kill two hybrids that come up on that lift. So, uh, we're just gonna kill things as they come up because we don't want 65 enemies attacking us. Trust me, uh, you've seen how much damage some of these things do to me. The last thing I need is to deal with every single enemy in this room at what? Bruh, dragon. Is to deal with every enemy in this room at once. You don't wanna see that. So this is a new enemy called the Roller. It's basically a Leaper, but it's evolved. It rolls around and it spits acid. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That, that, you'll see them a couple times, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Alright, so we're entering the second half of Bracknell 1. Uh, you'll also maybe have noticed at this point that some levels only have... 
Oh no, actually you wouldn't have it. This is the first uh, level that only has two missions. Everything prior to this has had three, but Bracknell only has a Bracknell 1 and a Bracknell 2. Uh, but Bracknell 1 is long enough to essentially be two missions. So, yeah. We're in the second half, like I said. <clears throat> doop, doop, doop. So all we gotta do is climb up. Uh, there is a snipe we're gonna try to do on some explosives. If we get it, it's going to kill every enemy on the upcoming platform. If we don't get it, uh, it's going to alert every enemy on the oncoming platform. So for the sake of my sanity, uh, I'm going to miss the shot in slow motion because I am bad. <clears throat> and then uh, fix that because I'm good. Ah, oh, that's an uh, unfortunate explosion. But as you can see, that killed everything. Um, that body on the ground is our first instance of a new enemy called Hardfangs. You were supposed to meet them earlier. They use arc chargers. But we uh, skipped the level where they showed up in entirely. So we're not going to actually see them until this next upcoming room. <clears throat> uh, so this is just a room full of a lot of enemies really annoying uh try not to die and this is the most annoying slope you want to bunny hop up it but not constantly because if you bunny hop the entire slope you'll actually continue get all of your momentum eaten and it'll be slower than if you had just ran up the thing right, so i'm being really safe there is a that that is a hard fang and an arc charger I was being really safe there and making sure I killed those enemies to not die to this, uh, to that room. <clears throat> and now we're coming up on Bracknell 2. And this is where we're going to get the second best gun in the game. The Lark. Uh, I don't know what it stands for. L-A-A-R-K. Uh, basically, rocket launcher. Rocket launchers are broken. And you will see why later when I use it on an enemy and it dies because the lark has a secondary fire um, let's just put it this way have you ever in your life wanted to own a missile that shot other missiles well now you can buy yourself a lark today oh hi Alright, so if this first trigger, we just have to kill a bunch of menials to trigger a lift to come down. Uh, which we apparently have not met the trigger for yet. There is a menial walking around somewhere like a jerk. There he is. <clears throat> that should have met the limit. Yes, it did. And now we're going to throw some sappers down. And that's the only time you're going to see me use that. Uh, because it's going to kill these guys the moment they hop down. We're going to hit that button and then hide because that switch is actually a really effective shield. And we're going to equip the dragon and make it through this room with the dragon and um, grenades. So each wave that we're going to fight here is steelheads and <coughs> uh, leapers. Steelheads do a lot of damage. If I get into a tough spot, the backup strat is to use the far eye sl uh, slow motion. So we will... Uh, oh my god, dude, please. We will uh, use that if my health gets too dangerously low. Because you can see these steelheads are doing a uh, large amount of damage to me. But it looks like we're fine. We have successfully dealt with the steelheads. Oh, God, no, we haven't. So, steelheads are actually super predictive. Um, they will predict your movements, and they will snipe you. Light anti-armor rock it. Thank you. Oh, come on, game. Uh, we might take another safety death here. For the sake of the marathon. Um, once I successfully take these guys out. Oh, God. 
Trust me, in this game, it is better to be safe than sorry. So now let's see if we're on a bad cycle or not. Um, is he going to turn around? He is not. Okay. So this room is the only instance of you want to be stealthy. If you are not stealthy, uh, everything in that room will attack you. And now I'm going to show you just how broken this Lark is. And not actually kill him for some reason because his movement is random. Uh, it is actually possible to drive that Stalker off a cliff and he'll die that way. But because of how the Lark works, its secondary fire will actually hit them and drive them a direction and if it fails or if it pushes them too far out of range uh because he was like one lark away one lark secondary away um then the lark rockets will stop homing in on them and i'll have to deal with them a secondary way such as that 40 millimeter grenade i just fired there all right so we are humming we are in london now um, the point of this game is we are making our way to London because it turns out that the Chimera have started causing snow in the middle of July by lowering the global temperature here. And they're doing it through this conduit system of um, tunnels and wires. So we're, we are now in London trying to destroy this tower in order to successfully save England. And somehow we ended up in a shopping mall and now we have to get through this shopping mall and not die. So we'll see how much HP I have because we've been skipping every enemy we can here. Uh, and depending on how much HP here, I might actually need to take a genuine safety death uh 250 that's good okay we are we good we do not need to take this safety death um so you're intended to go down to that area beneath me but we're gonna hop along this railing and do a small sequence break along an invisible wall hop over a giant trigger for a rather annoyingly hard fight and skip straight into the hotel at the end of the level Um, and then we're going to do another small sequence break. This uh, rubble has no invisible wall on top. You can just kind of hop over it. And kill these last two enemies. And we're going to finish London 1. There we go. Alright, so London 2 is just... Um, Big enemies, vehicles, and then clear out a hotel. Uh, there's not really anything to explain. Uh, this also introduces a new enemy called Widowmakers, which uh, if you're scared of spooters, I apologize. Um, I can't exactly tell you to look away because we're not going to kill it on purpose. Uh, until very late um, but this is again an example of the lark being broken and now a titan's going to spawn and we're going to do it again and this last lark we have is actually really important um, if we use it we will not have it later for a uh, extremely important enemy Thank you. Yeah, that uh, that mission is ridiculous. Um, there's actually another skip in that level you can do for um, even higher difficulties on Superhuman. It's not RTA viable unless you're doing Superhuman because of how challenging. Um, oh, okay, Spooter. Because of how challenging the mall actually is on higher difficulties. Uh, so the point of this mission is to use this tank and kill, uh, like, eight stalkers. We have to kill this first group so a gate will open. And as you can see, the tank has wonderful accuracy. I'll be looked, or locked right on to a stalker. 
and it will just not connect. But that's generally few and far between, and it's unlikely we'll take enough damage to be in a bad spot. In my entire career of running this game over two years, I have only one time ever been killed on this mission. Even on the hardest difficulty. One time ever. So, that tells you just how strong the tank is. In fact, it's so strong, I wonder, why did America not send more tanks? They are just so insanely powerful. But, I mean, soldiers are more expendable than tanks. So these are the last two stalkers we're gonna kill um, with the tank. There's gonna be another stalker in Widowmaker, but we don't actually care about them. They're not mandatory. In fact, the only reason we killed those stalkers is because they're going to body block us if we ignore them and do more damage than um, we can afford. Uh, Titan here. Titans die to tanks. It's kind of a joke. And then once it blows up, we're just gonna get out of that tank because that is the end level or that is the end of the tank section and move into the hotel and we now need to take this hotel over first thing we're gonna do is move into the side room and try to trick a hybrid into coming after us there is one lone hybrid down that side path that let's just hope he comes to us up the stairs Four um, enemies in this room. Oh, hello. You're behind me. And then one in that side room who followed me. And this guy who was very well behaved and came upstairs. Hmm. Drink your aqua, kids. I've been talking very long and my throat hurts. <clears throat> all right. Yes, all of the Americans Cobra except for Hale are dead. Um, the ones that came over to England. The rest of America doesn't actually know this happened yet. Because it was kept a secret by President... I don't want to say Grace, because Grace is the president in the next game. <clears throat> um, so yeah, we are now in Thames. Um, there are five levels left. I'm going to uh, destroy some more stalkers. And at this point, I'm sure you know how stalker destruction works. Sea Stalker, Fire Lark, Stalker Die. It's a good game. It's a fun game. That's how it be. And then wait for these hybrids, then throw another Backlash here. And these hybrids will pretty much kill themselves. Well, I prep a Lark for a second Stalker to show up. <clears throat> Yo, what's up, Head Gog? Head. Hedge Egg? Dude, your name triggers me. I want you to know that. Hedgehogs are so terrifying in this game. Dude, please. Okay, never mind. You'll see the zapper again. Alright, so... I'm not getting that weapon quick enough. So, a Widowmaker is going to show up. And the intended way to fight it is to let it walk into this arena. But, uh, we have better plans. Because it's vulnerable back there. And it died. That's how you fight Widowmakers in this game, when you uh, have to do it by hand. You uh, you laugh as they get utterly destroyed. This is the cutscene you're going to watch. Uh, and there it was. Hopefully you saw it. Uh, enjoy it. That's the only cutscene we're going to see in the entire run. It is literally impossible to skip that cutscene. You will always see a frame of it. No matter how fast you're pressing start. Um, so this is Rooftops. We're going to hopefully make it through this with good health because uh, we can die very easily here if we get um, bad enemy positions. 
These are also the only stairs in the game where jumping doesn't help go faster for some reason. All right, we got good health. We have great health. And we're going to do a small skip here. Uh, that stops those enemies in that room from aggroing on you, which is very unfortunate. Uh, super safe backlash. I actually didn't need to throw that one. But um, I can afford a single backlash grenade for safety. And I'm going to take it there because if you run into those four guys and you get meleeed once, you're done. Exactly. Exactly, Joe. Dying is bad. We do not want to die. Um, so this is, in my opinion, the hardest level in the game uh, to learn to speedrun for. Uh, it's been made easier, but if the first room doesn't behave well, then the rest of the level is going to be brutal. Um, I actually cannot go too close to the right, or that entire room will hatch of leapers. And if that room hatches, uh, we have way more enemies than I care to deal with. And we will probably die. Okay, so that went well. And now the second room, which could go memes, depending on how this Lark missile works out. Hopefully that Lark will kill everyone. And it did a good enough job for me to be happy. Because I can take care of that Steelhead. Chuck a grenade over there, because we can. Um, so when you throw a grenade, it actually makes enemies dive for safety. And you can use that to your advantage so that you could get through rooms without being uh, perpetually shot at. Uh, so this next area, if you've played multiplayer, might be pretty familiar to you. There are about four different skips in this small icy area. We're going to go for a interesting one. That if we get it first try is worth it. If we get it second try was I we did it for show. If we get it third try, uh, we're losing time. So we're gonna hop on this invisible wall. Hop on this one. Okay. So first try is done. We're gonna try it again. Uh, what this will do is skip straight to the end of the level if we get it. All right. I'm gonna try one more time, and then I'm just gonna move on. All right, so line this up, and oh, I don't have the momentum. All right, unfortunately, we didn't get it. Um, what you would do is you'd land on a lip, and you'd skip straight to the end of the level. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't. So the other skip would have been to land up by that turret, by the, the first turret we saw. And it would have skipped the arc charger trigger, or those two hard fang triggers. But the end of the level is directly in front of me. So as you can see... It's, it's like a second, it's a couple seconds of time save. Missing it is not super critical. The level itself is pretty short. Death warps are cheating. Good thing when we die, we only warp a jeep to us. We don't actually death warp. Oh man, challenges are being thrown up in chat, dude. Alright, so this is intended to be the second Jeep mission. Nah, Jeep's bad. Lark's good. That's why Larks are good. Don't know if anyone saw that, but uh, that Lark just utterly decimated. Oh my god, why are you in my face, dude? Um, that Lark just utterly decimated that guy. So, yeah. So now we have hedgehogs again. Um, if we're going to die to a hedgehog, it will be here. Uh, one of these hedgehogs is going to explode, and it's going to meme us into a thousand itty-bitty tiny pieces because this game is wonderful and will do that. Um, thankfully, it did not. Kill those two steelheads, and then we are now in control of a stalker. Uh, and now we got a big mechanical spooter. This is a goliath. They are basically... Uh, giant bipedal chimeran tanks uh you know how when the stalker stepped on me i died instantly yeah same thing 
if this thing steps on me, I'm I'm done. It's instant game over. And the checkpoint for this <laughs> fight is actually right at the start of it, but it doesn't actually trigger on the death of this thing. It requires on the death of two optional stalkers. And it's very important that we get through this fight with a reasonable amount of HP because this thing's damage to me is a joke. The other two stalkers damage to me is not a joke. The other two stalkers will do a insane amount of damage uh, and we don't get the checkpoint if we die to them. So, uh, yeah, here's hoping we don't die to them. That's the Goliath. The Stalker actually controls really, really bad. It's super loose, which is unfortunate. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay, so we got a good hit on that Stalker. Uh, Please, 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 please die. Thank you. Um, I actually can hit myself with my own rockets, by the way. So, if you see me playing super safely, it's so I don't blast myself with a rocket and do way more damage to myself than I can afford. Alright. So, with that done... Uh, those two stalkers done. We had to successfully clear out this little bit of hybrids here. And with these hybrids done, we are going to spawn camp um, this last set of hybrids in this mission. Alright. Oh, he didn't die. He's supposed to die. Okay, game. Thank you for not spawn camping him. And now we're intended to fight a Widowmaker in this room, but uh, instead we're going to instant kill it. But we're going to kill it too slow for Cartwright here. So apparently we were messing about during that fight and did not successfully kill that Widowmaker correctly. Um, Cartwright's picky. Like, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Cartwright is way too picky. We just, we couldn't do it fast enough. <clears throat> but, we are moving into Tower. These are the last two missions of the run. <clears throat> uh, and for reference, we're currently on 137 pace, I think. Um... So yeah, we're going to get our final weapon here. This is the Bullseye Mark II. Uh, and you'll notice that I have one backlash saved. This backlash makes this fight a hundred times easier. That was an angel. You'll be seeing them later for a split second before I kill them. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to use uh, this Lark and kill these bullseye mark two guys because lord knows they are um oh my god they are the bane of any resistance players lives this fight here is so ridiculously stupidly hard uh without backlash grenades that it's it's just straight up on fun uh, I'm making sure all of them are dead because they will chase me across this bridge. So here's our first, like, we get a real good look at an angel. And that was your good look at an angel. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It's dead now. I'm gonna wait on... No, don't soft lock me. Okay, cool. Uh, so that door will zip you up and it's possible to clip inside that door and die. Or not die and soft lock. I had it happen at the last marathon I ran this game at. I got super lucky. All right. So this is our last set of chemical fuel and backlash grenades. From this point on, we have to make the three backlash grenades and the frag or er, and the um that are the dragon last because those are the most critical parts of this run we need a minimum of 35 dragon 
for what we're going to do. So I need to be pretty careful. Its ammo is fairly lenient, but better safe than sorry. All right, so that's the first room. Now we have to get through a second room. I'm gonna play it safe and recover HP here. Um, the second room is actually the harder room because it has some steel heads in it. Uh, but with that one dead, we're pretty safe. <clears throat> Chunky. Yeah, this game, um, to respond to you, um, Gravy Roll, this game is very drab and bloom. If you ever are asked to describe this game, that's what I would say. Drab and bloom. Insomniac decided every color needed to be a muted gray. And bloom just in your face. <clears throat> All right. So now we're doing a short run across this. We're gonna fail miserably at successfully getting that airfoil grenade snipe. Uh, I never introduced the airfoil grenades, I apologize. Uh, basically it's a grenade, you throw it and it emits this gas and then it uh, l like flicks a, um, a, uh, like a flint and it causes the entire gas to ignite. Uh, Chimera are extremely weak to fire, as you can see by the dragon's usefulness in the run. And that fire weakness is why fire weapons are so good. <laughs> it's the brownest game. But unlike the, um, dragon, which actually can't kill you, if you walk into an airfoil, you will also die. That is true. PS3 had a habit of making games brown. But I love the game nonetheless. I don't let the graphics get to me. I'm happy with it. All right, so just like this chapter is called Last Hope, uh, this is the last mission. It's about a five minute mission. And if you've played this game casually before, hold on to your seats. Because what I'm going to do to the final boss is going to blow your minds. I hope someone's played this game casually before because I expect someone to just not be able to comprehend what they are about to see when I get there. Alright, so first things first, skip that fight. Widowmaker. Oh, Widowmaker's in a bad spot. Okay, we don't make her dead anyway. Uh, kill these guys as they spawn in. Hopefully. Uh, we got most of them. That's good enough. And now, I need to re-equip the Lark. What do you hold on to if you haven't played it casually? Uh, you're... I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, so this room is actually pretty important that we conserve our larks it takes four larks to get through this room uh and i no longer have four larks so we're gonna do this the safe strat you can see how good these guys are at sniping like i have to actually stop to be safe uh okay we're doing this the super safe strat now what 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 okay uh, yeah, we're 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 going super safe now. I'm not uh, I'm not risking um, dying here. So you can actually snipe these steel heads while on this pipe, but if you're not conscious of where you are on this pipe, the walkable collision actually ends relatively quick, and you'll just slide off and die. And if you slide off and die, you have to go all the way back to the beginning of that room. Um, the intent was to get through that in only four larks, but because two of my larks missed, um, I had to improvise here. Or I had to improvise there. Oops. So, this is intended to be a large, really epic fight um, with two angels, but you've seen what happens to angels at this point. 
And uh, it's not going to change today. Wow, what a good angel fight. I am so intimidated by angels. Aren't you guys intimidated by those things? They're the scariest things in this game, man. I'd never be able to beat this game if it wasn't for angels. <clears throat> er, sorry. Uh, if it wasn't for, uh... You know what I mean. It's hard. I'm thinking. I'm playing. Remember Resistance 2 ends because you turn into Invincible God? You do turn into an Invincible God. It is actually possible to die at the end of Resistance 2, but you have to try. You, 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 you actively have to try to die at Resistance 2. How can you kill a god? Uh, with a flamethrower. That's how I kill a god. Okay, so we're coming up on the final boss. Um, I will tell you when time is. It's going to be when a icon appears in the bottom right, but you have plenty of time. It's not going to be a big deal here. <clears throat> we just got to skip a cutscene, and we'll be in it. Okay, so final boss of this game is um, this giant building thing, or this, like, reactor here. We're gonna hop on... Dude, get out of the way. We're gonna hop on this barricade, hop on this one, hop on this one, hop on this one, get blasted by a titan, and then hop. So we are now at the back end of this level, and it turns out this is bulletproof glass, but it's not fire proof glass so anyone who's played this game casually will know you're supposed to hit a switch to activate this bulletproof glass to start lowering down turns out that uh if you come here with the dragon there is a spot you can aim at and uh fire goes through glass so, because that Titan's alive, we're going to throw a backlash here for safety. Uh, we pass through all of these triggers backwards. So, now there are enemies spawning. The Titan can still kill us. It's like, that roar is kind of terrifying. Getting meleeed is kind of terrifying. Oof. That's... That's unfortunate. So we were relying on RNG for our friends here to actually kill the Titan. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't. So I'm going to make sure I do it myself this time. So that doesn't happen. Because at this point, yeah, that was not good. Um, and if that happens, you do have to redo the whole room. Um, but it's gonna be the exact same thing again. Um, this time we just don't have a titan to, uh, harass us. Generally, your allies will actually kill that titan. The fact that they didn't is a very, very low chance. Um, and then they let the titan walk over to me, which means that he killed all of them. So, I got roared at, which did 50% of my HP, and then he meleeed me, or he blasted me, which just utterly annihilated me, because, you know, it's fun. So, final rod, once again, uh, no titan this time, thankfully. And once I destroy the rod, um, we'll get a cutscene. So, watch the bottom right. When you see the icon, it'll be time. I will call it out. We're gonna get a fade here. And... Time. <clears throat> so, that's Resistance Fall of Man. Um, even with all those mistakes, that was still an excellent run. Um... I apologize for that death on the final boss, but I did mention this game is very, very scary. Enemies will do way more damage than they should, even on easy. Uh, so, it's a good thing we managed to complete the run. Um, I'm very happy we completed it, period. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed Resistance Fall of Man. 
uh, please join the Discord if you're interested in learning the run. I'd really appreciate, I'd, I'd love to see you there. I'd love to help teach you the run or help you through it. Uh, we could always use runners. Currently, it's only me running it. I think Epic's retired from the game. Um, it'd be absolutely great. I can skip all these credits and stuff. So before I sign off, I'd like to show you one quick r screen just so it's sitting there. Uh, and then I will be good to sign off. Uh, this is also a teaser for two. We don't need to see that. If you beat the game, I think it's like six times, you get this wonderful message. And on this message, I wish you all the best. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. And I'm good to go. You all have a great night or a great morning wherever you are. Hopefully you enjoyed the run.